welcome to Steelworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. So what are we going to get into today? Well today is distilling day and we are going to distill out our corn vodka mash and we're going to be using our bubble plate. Uh, so you, all, you don't want to miss this one. So let's get ready to get started. Something you can really do to help this channel out and this is how we keep bringing new content to you and it's simple to do but if you give it if you haven't done it yet a lot of you have but if you haven't done it yet just hit that subscribe button we would really appreciate it all right so now let's get started before I get started I had one great question and I wanted to kind of throw it out there and the question was is corn vodka and moonshine the same? Well the answer is kind of. But the only difference is is when you make a vodka it needs to come off to still somewhere between 160 and, and like you know, and higher 190 and then what you would end up doing is proofing it back down after you distill it you would proof it back down to what you like you know 80, 100 whatever your preference is okay corn vodka should come off uh, I mean uh, moonshine should come off the still like 140 or a little below and that's how you're going to get that uh, it's just kind of like whiskey where you get that flavor that's going to come through just remember higher the proof lower the flavor so that's why moonshine is a little bit different than vodka because it comes off the still at a lower proof, <laughs> 140, you know, 140 or somewhere in that neighborhood, and you will get more flavor from that, and that's the main difference between corn vodka and moonshine. I hope that cleared it up a little bit. All right, so now we got to get things going. Okay, it's all the cap and has settled down. Tastes real sour. I know it's done. I can put a. Uh, you know the bubbler quit bubbling a few days ago and everything's cleared out now I like to use an auto siphon to transfer it from a fermentation bucket <coughs> to my still pot let me show and then after I get done I'm gonna show you why I do that all right so I mean the auto siphon it's so easy you just stick it in there <coughs> give it a couple pumps and you're on your way all right so I'll show you what's going on after I'm done okay okay you can see I'm done siphoning and if you see down there see that's what is that that's dead yeast and part of the you know ain't if I got any of the corn particles in the mash it all be down here in the bottom this is all the stuff I don't I want my mash that's going into my still pot to be as clean as I can get it because that is less chance of scorching but you can see what's left over all right all right next step I want to do is I want to uh, degas my mash before I start heating it up it I just feel that it helps with puking uh, it's just the way I was taught all right, so let's degas that, and it, it don't take very long to do, so why not? Okay, so what's the next step? Well, let's start stacking at our still and uh, let's keep going.
up we got one two three four bubble plates up above that we got our precondenser and then our uh, outlet of course thermometer up top okay so how's the water running let me show you that okay so I got a water inlet here I got two uh, valves one is one valve is going to be controlling our precondenser okay so you know when we start well, we'll, sh we'll get into that. So one controls the precondenser and one controls the regular Liebig condenser. Liebig, Liebig condenser there. So that's that's how we control the water. We got inlet and then we got outlet. Okay. Alright, so we got the still heating up. So uh, as soon as it heats up and starts happening, we'll be back. Show you where I'm at right now. My pot temperature is somewhere in the neighborhood of about a little over 160. I'm starting to see a little bit of fog up in the uh, plates and down in my sight, down in my sight glass. There we go. I got a little bit of fog in there, and I'm starting to see some fog in my my different bubble plates. Okay, I have the water turned off on the precondenser right at this moment. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to let it still warm up. I'm going to let the four shots of heads come on up and I'm going to let them out. Okay? So I will turn the water on in the condenser, but I'm going to leave the precondenser off. And I'm going to go ahead and collect off six ounces of um, distillate. And then I'm gonna consider that my four shots and heads. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna, then I'll start turning the water on here, and I'll go into free uh, reflux. And then we're gonna start loading these plates up, and uh, we're gonna start making some vodka. All right, so that's where I'm at right now. We're still heating up. Uh, it's gonna start soon. I mean, my head temperatures it ain't going to work. Okay, let's see what's going on. I mean, you can see. It's starting to rise and condensate there. What we're trying to do is we're going to heat the column up. You can see it's it's condensing. Oh, there you go. Let me shut some heat down. All right. So I turned the heat down because it's uh I don't want it to puke. But you can see it's 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 working there. It's going to start heating everything up. It's actually putting a little bit out of the uh, condenser right now. You can see it's it's all starting to warm up. It's getting hot. You can see uh, a little bit of reflux going on. And that's going to happen until uh, it warms up. I do not, like I said, I do not have the pre-condenser on yet. So we're just going to let it work itself. And we're going to leave it alone until we collect our six ounces I'm gonna say All right. but it is working and uh, it's warming up okay so we got I mean you can see the plates are trying to fill up and we got a nice little stream coming out and it's not smelling too bad it was a little bit pungent it ain't smelling too bad now but I'm gonna still collect off I don't know six to eight ounces and then once we do, once we get to where we're at with that, then I'm going to turn the water on here and start cooling this jack, uh, precondenser down. And then you'll see that the uh, production, the output, it will stop. And then we'll go into full reflux mode. And then we'll let, give it that for a little while. Uh, I don't know if you remember episodes, I don't know how many episodes good I did the uh, modifications to this. Um, bubble plate it works out great now you can check that out if you want all right so uh, we got all right I'm tasting pretty good I got my six ounces let's start shutting water off here can you see the uh, the output there and when I turn this water on you should see that pretty much stop And you don't have to turn very much water on.
But what we're going to do is we're going yeah, to see it slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, almost to a stop. There she stops. See? So we're going to go into full reflux mode, and we're going to start seeing these plates fill up, and it should work pretty good. So what's the ideal of the plates? I mean, what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, I've said it in the past, what basically what's going on is the molecule, the alcohol molecules are coming up the column and they are dragging along with them some water. It is stuck to the, the alcohol molecules that are coming up. Okay, water is flavor. So if you have, if you're making a whiskey or bourbon something where you don't use plates, you're wanting some of that to carry over some of that great flavor. But since we're making a vodka, uh, what we're trying to do is knock those water molecules away from the alcohol. So, as the molecule's coming up, it's got water stuck to it, it's hitting these bubble plates and beating it up, and the water's going to drop back down. Water has impurities with it, and as the more uh, pure it comes up, it moves on up to the next one, the next one, the next one. And by the time you get up top here, you should be pretty damn pure alcohol, right? And that's the idea behind it. Is we're just trying to knock them molecules loose. Okay, and if you can see this, right now I'm very happy with the way this bubble plate is working. It's, it's interacting very, very good. You can see the... Uh, the little tangs that comes off, it's dropping it down. So everything is working great. Um, I'm just getting a few drips off the thing. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to turn the heat up in the pot just a little bit. And then I'm going to start cutting the water back in the precondenser. And then we're going to start collecting. Well, I'm going to move this out of the way. So, let me uh, turn the heat up just a little bit, and I'm going to shut the water down in the pre-condenser a little bit, and I'm going to just give me a nice little coming off there, and plus maintain you know, a nice uh, plate fill. Okay, so let me just turn this off just a little bit, and you'd be surprised, you don't need very much water going to that pre-condenser. find a nice happy balance. I mean you can really see it running back down that glass. It, 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 it takes, don't, don't be in a hurry, it takes time. Alright, so it's starting to produce out output we're starting to get some output and what I'm going to try to do is regulate that output and you got to you take take your time making your changes because it takes a few minutes to uh, react okay I don't know if you can you see that no you can't see that everything waste from if you notice I got a nice little flood on the plates nothing uh, too much they're filling up just the way I like it over on the output, I got a uh, broken stream. I mean, I might turn this down just a hair. Okay, so what, how do we control this? Well, the amount of coming up is you can control that by your heat that you're putting into your still pot. How, how much you're throwing back down the column, you're going to control by this pre-condenser. Uh, and what you're going to do is watch your output, and that's how you're going to adjust it. Uh, you don't want these filling up too much, but you need them to fill up some. Alright, they're filling up to the top of my well there. See my wells in each one of them? So that is great. Alright.
So I think we're pretty much set. I might turn the water down just to get a little bit more production out to let a little bit more buy. The more water you put into this pre condenser is more that you're going to send back down and not let out. Okay? Okay. Let me tell you where I'm at. I got three quarts of 85%. I'm very happy with that. Uh, but the still is still running, but I noticed it was it was starting to drop off. And, well, let me back up a little bit. So, the check, you normally see me use a refractometer. But these are only good up to 80%. After that, they don't really work. So you got to use a regular glass proof and trails hydrometer you know, to check this uh, vodka out. Uh, so it's all right at 85%. Ooh, it's good. A little hot. So, but I do have a little corn taste. To, oh, it's very good. So anyway, so what's going on with the still? What I'm going to do, because there's still... It's still got some good alcohol, so I'm going to shut the water off to the uh, pre-condenser. And I'm going to just collect this alcohol off. I'm going to put it over in my paint jar. You know, I don't want to get rid of any good alcohol. So, what's next? Alright, so what's next is, let me get this in a mixing jar. And then, uh, we'll prove it down wherever we want. Alright, so I'll be right back. Alright, so... I'm going to get all these put in my mixing jar. I'm very happy with all this. It tastes fantastic. Well, I know that I'm going to have to mix oh, at least one. I know I'm going to have more than this. Here's one bottle of water. I'm still getting good alcohol. What are we still getting? I mean, it's still coming off the still at 40%. But, what we got here? Oh, it's still near 80%. Alright, so let me, I might get another jar. I've been wanting to make this vodka for a while. I do like the commercial brand. This is the first time I ever did this for myself. Let's see where we're at now. I mean, it's crystal clear. Not right now, the bubbles in it, but it's crystal clear. Taste is good. Uh, that's 60. Go with one more bottle of wood. If I could get it at a hundred, I'd be happy. A hundred proof, that is. You know what I meant. Hmm, just a little above a hundred. We get another bottle.
Okay, we're, I think we're going to be right on now. Well, that's 90 proof. I'm going to leave it right there. Yeah, 90 proof. I wonder what it tastes like. It's very smooth. Uh, you can almost taste. I mean, it's a typical vodka. I mean, it's uh, not very much taste, but I just get a little hint of a smoothness of like a of corn taste. You know, like a corn liquor, but I mean, very very little. That is delicious. I mean, to make a mixed drink with that would be fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, how's it taste to the commercial brand? Pretty damn close. Now I know their process is a little bit different, but that is very good. Alright, well that is our and I got a gallon, almost a gallon and a half. Pretty close to it. So I'm very happy with that. Crystal clear, like I said. The only thing I got left to do is uh, I'll put it in, I'm going to let it breathe for a little while. And then I'm going to put it in some bottles. Put some labels on it. I'm ready to go. Okay. Alright, I think, what are we at here? I would be willing to bet. We're, well, it's just, I'm just collecting some tails anyway. But it's still coming off at it's still 40 percent so they're good alcohol there but uh i'm gonna say i'm gonna collect this for a little while yeah i'll use that as tails and uh we'll go from there all right i hope you like this episode or this series you know, corn vodka. Uh, hey, I'm going to tell you. With the price of corn, and if you can, the more you can make out of corn, the better off I am. You know? Plus, I love the taste of it. I really do. Okay. So, what's next? Like I said, bottle up and enjoy. I guess the last thing i got to say is, Hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Worship and Brewing. Cheers, everybody. All right.